This live broadcast is brought to you by Stay tuned as ITV takes you to the heart of Hajj in this special live broadcast from Saudi Arabia. Of 15 million people congregate and move in exactly the same places at exactly the same time without a problem. Alhamdulillah. Um, of course, as you can see here on the scene from behind me, it's the area or the, the holy area of Mina. We are on the first day of, uh, of Eid al Adha, and we are, um, I feel the spread side is is alive here yes, I mean, uh, the process of Hajj yes is very very emotional and uh, yes it is it really touches all of us as Muslims mm -hmm. that Hajj has a series of rituals which have to be performed but Hajj is far more deeper than the rituals it was experiences Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. Welcome back to ITV's Hajj broadcast, 1435-2014. Indeed, the greatest journey of a lifetime. It, it's not just a journey of a lifetime. It's the greatest journey of a lifetime. Greater emphasis in the way that sentence is uh, structured. And that sentence is on the screen behind me, on the screen on the floor. And you'll repeatedly look at that sentence and let it reflect and let it dawn. Uh, for those who have already performed the Hajj, whether it was one time or multiple times, from the depths of your heart, uh, offer a, uh, a prayer of gratitude and say, uh, Oh Allah, I thank you and I, I am indebted to you that you have enabled me to perform that uh, journey of a lifetime. Yesterday I mentioned that uh, I was listening to an interview with the South African ambassador to the uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and he was saying, that here in South Africa, we get frustrated, we get agitated uh, because uh, we feel we have to wait a few years uh, before you secure that accreditation uh, to go for Hajj uh, due to the quotas, etc. He says in some countries, uh, the, the numbers are so huge that even though they may have bigger quotas in South Africa, people have to wait till they are into their 60s uh, before they can actually embark on this great journey, this journey of spirituality, uh, this journey of coming to, uh, closer to Allah this journey of seeking redemption, uh, this journey of starting your life afresh, uh, this journey of uh, renewing your pledge with Allah. Yesterday, I spoke a little bit about uh, why these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are great. And uh, my colleague, Sheikh Sam Hajjad Al Khattari, uh, who was with you in the early part of this evening before uh, the Health Matters program, uh, he also was speaking a little bit about uh, the virtues of these 10 days. But Ibn Hajjad Rahimahullah, I wanted to just make this one point. Uh, Ibn Hajar rahimahullah said, why is it that these uh, 10 days are so great that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, there are no days in the year in which uh, acts of worship are greater than in these 10 days. Why? Why so? And he gives a wonderful answer. He says that apart from the fact that obviously Hajj takes place uh, during these 10 days and Udhiyya and Qurbani, and this is, uh, you know, a, a great tribute to the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. He says, if you look at it, all major ibadat, all major acts of worship are found during these 10 days. If you just take Hajj in itself, Hajj uh, comprises of Salah and Salah is found. Hajj comprises of the element of fasting. Why do I say the element of fasting? Because uh, what, what is fasting all about? Fasting is about restraining yourself. It's about refraining. It's about curbing your urge. So you have the urge to drink water. You have the urge to, f uh, to eat food. But you have to curb it for a restricted period of time. So as a muhrim, a person who is in the state of ihram, ordinarily, if you feel you get, it's, you're getting a bit sweaty, uh, you can put aitar, you can put perfume, whilst you're in ihram, you cannot. Uh, ordinarily, you will be able to comb your hair, whilst you're in the state of ihram, you cannot. I'm just mentioning one or two random examples. Then there's charity. The haji is, is uh, you know, encouraged to give charity. Whatever mistakes the haji makes here and there, there's sadaqah. If it's of a greater nature, there's a dim. So you have to spend. And if you look at this 10 days then in a broader context, one is in Hajj, you find all of these uh, elements. There is a monetary exertion in Hajj. Uh, therefore, there is an element of zakat as well. Because Hajj 
uh, you spending you spending in the path of Allah wa uh, You have to you have to incur expenses. You have to take out from your wealth and and spend for the pleasure of Allah wa Taala. And in essence, that, what, what, that is what zakat is. Zakat is not a tax. Zakat is a financial act of worship. You're taking part of your of your ibadah. Uh, a part of your wealth and you're spending it in the path of Allah wa ta'ala with the intention of reward. So fast, uh, so Hajj has an element of zakat in it. It has an element of sawm in it. Uh, it has, uh, it has uh, salah in it as well. And uh, you know the, the tawheed, you are, what, uh, you are what you call it, uh, proclaiming the tawheed of Allah wa ta'ala all the time. So I just wanted to mention that in Hajj you find all of those dimensions and in the first 10 days in the broader sense, you find all of those dimensions, but I'll elaborate a little bit more on that uh, in a short while. I get an indication from our producers that we are ready now to cross over to our studios in Azizia. And standing by, we have a very august personality, a very senior alim, a very senior scholar of our country, Sheikh Ibrahim Gabriels, or Sheikh Ibrahim Jibril, as he's sometimes referred to, a former president of the Muslim Judicial Council of South Africa, also the former president of the United Ulama Council of South Africa, a very well-respected alim in the Western Cape throughout our country and internationally as well. We now cross over to our studios in Aziziyah, and we say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to Sheikh Ibrahim Gabriels. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Our beloved mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and honorable youth and children and the viewers of ITV It's once again a great honor and a privilege for us to come to you live from the holiest place in the world the greatest city in the world Umm al the mother of all cities This city welcomes everybody there's no discrimination and in this city you feel that you belong here whosoever enters Makkah says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you feel that you are in safety you are in peace you feel that feeling of tranquility alhamdulillah so viewers uh, beloved mothers and fathers alhamdulillah we are here to, to link you up with the people of all parts of the world. We are here to link you up with the Hujads. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this form of media. That we are here in Makkah, but we directly are connected to you. And this Ummah is Ummatan Wahida, one Ummah. And that is what the Hajj is all about. Allah is bringing everybody together here in Makkah. You really experience the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayywan nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakari wa untha, wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu, inna akramakum inda Allah atqakum. Allah says, O oh people, we have created you from one single male and from one single female into different tribes and different nations, li ta'arafu, so that you can recognize one another so that you can respect one another, so that you can love one another and not look down upon anybody. And that is exactly what is happening here on Hajj. You see everybody from all over the world. You see people from, uh, from Africa, from Asia, from Europe. You see poor people, rich people, black people, white people, but all are the same in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only difference is Piety, taqwa. That is how Allah is going to judge us the day of Yawm al Qiyamah. So, Alhamdulillah, it's a great honor to be here. Wallahi, my viewers, my beloved viewers, I share with you, you know, I, 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 I sit sometimes with admiration just by looking at the people of the world. You know, and the great part of it is that most of the Hujaj are elderly people. And they are here. And they are part of the movement that we spoke about earlier. Moving to the haram, moving in the heat. Old people making tawaf almost every day. Some of them are making tawaf after fajr and tonight after maghrib. Allahu Akbar. That is the spirit of the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
I, I must share with you also that now the other day I made salah next to an old man from Afghanistan. And then I opened my sajjada, or we call it musallah, so that he can share with me my sajjada, Allahu Akbar. And um, after the salah, I, I, took it, uh, I took it upon myself to, to, to take his hand, and I took a chance to kiss his hand. But I felt so great because I was thinking of my own father. I used to kiss my, the, the hand of my father. May Allah grant him and all our fathers and mothers jannat and firdaus. And wallahi, I must say with you, I cried because I felt so good. Because this man next to me, I don't know him, but I know he's, he's my father. And the younger people, they are our own brothers. And all the females, they're either my sister or my mother. And this is the spirit of the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad I can share with you also another story. You know how it, it is on the escalators coming down from the Haram. And many of the elderly people, they don't know how to use. And this old lady from India, she was struggling. And I immediately took her hand. And I felt so great because I took the hand of one of my mothers. Allahu Akbar. And Friday, Jumu'ah, it was full to capacity. And people were looking for places. Three hours before Jumu'ah, they closed downstairs. Me and my wife, we found a place. And as we were sitting, another lady from Algeria came. She's about 82 years old. And a Turkish lady, she said, no, you can't stand here. You can't stand here. And then I, I, I gave her my place. And she cried. And she cried, she said, shukran, shukran. But the beauty part of it is, later on, the Turkish lady, with her eyes full of tears, she asked for this lady, please give me maaf. I was wrong. Allah <laughs> She was crying bitterly. And the, the elderly lady of Algeria said, no problem. I've accepted, I've accepted your maaf. Alhamdulillah. So, honorable viewers, we've got Sheikh Riyad uh, Waltz also with us once again my beloved colleague, and um, every year or every second year we make dua, he makes dua, I make dua, oh Allah grant me the suhbah, the companionship of Sheikh Riyad, and Sheikh Riyad makes the, the, the same dua, and now we found ourselves together in the studios of um, ITV, and I give you over now to Sheikh Riyad. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاء ما بعد جماعة المسلمين respected viewers of ITV I greet you all with universal greetings of love, mercy and peace السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام to my beloved Sheikh Ibrahim Jibreel truly every time we make this dua الصحبة الصحبة and we find ourselves sitting together on the same plane. And for the last two occasions that we made that dua, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us in the same room and put us together on Mina. Because this is truly the place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts all your duas. Definitely. But Alhamdulillah, this year Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed Sheikh that his wife could be with him. And uh, I said uh, to uh, our beloved mother, Sayyida Aisha, Sheikh Ibrahim's wife, that inshallah, she can have 51% of the sahaba, but I want the 49%, inshallah, when the ladies and the men are separated, inshallah. and I can have the sahaba of Sheikh, Amen. as Amen. we made in the dua, inshallah, Amen. on Mina, and inshallah, we'll all be together Amen. on Arafah, Amen. and walk, inshallah, back to Mazdalif and back to Mina, inshallah. Ya Rab. Ya Rab. Subhanallah, Sheikh, you know, you brought tears to my eyes when you spoke about the compassion mm. that we see being shown. Mm. I also experienced something where in the tawaf, there was an old man walking with a bottle of water. Mm. But an even older lady was sitting down with her back against the board mm. on that sky ring yeah. of the tawaf yeah. on the second level. And she reached out as far as she could and she managed just to tap the mm. bottle of water. Uh. And the old Turkish man saw that she was in need and he looked at the bottle because he also needed the water. Mm. But he gave it up. Allah for that Allah. complete stranger. Allah but yet somebody that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put love in his heart for why? Because she is part of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I think truly, you know, we all are brought to this place to just realize that alhamdulillah, I'm a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. 
who would I be today, Sheikh? If Allah had not guided me, if Allah had not guided you to Islam, we wouldn't have known each other. We wouldn't have this experienced this love and this brotherhood for each other. And I think it's to Makkah and to Medina that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala brings the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to realize that it doesn't matter if you are white or you are black. It doesn't matter if you are a Malay or an Indian or a Cockney or a Surti or a Memon or a Kanamir. It doesn't matter whether you be an Arab or be a Turk. But what matters is that you have the kalima of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam beating in your heart. And I think this is the main purpose of, uh, of the Hajj when Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala speaks in those beautiful verses where Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, Al Hajj Ashurun Ma'lumat, Faman Farada Fihin al Hajj, Fala Rafatha, Wala Fasuka, Wala Jidala Fil Hajj, Wama Tafalu Min Khairin, Yalamahullah, Watazawudu Fa in the Khair Zadi Taqwa, Wat Takuni, Ya Ulul Aba. In fact, we discussed those verses last night about the provision of taqwa. That it's the most important provision on hajj is to be conscious and mindful of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. To worship Allah as if you see him. Yeah. But if you don't see him, then verily know that Allah subhanahu Allah. wa ta'ala sees you. Allah. And in that Allah consciousness, we realize that we have come here to testify to the greatest favor that Allah has bestowed upon us. And that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِن كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ لِيَشْهَدُوا مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ And proclaim the pilgrimage, O Abraham. They will come on foot and on every means of transport. They will come from every distant ravine and valley in order to testify and bear witness to the favor of Allah on them. Allah. That they are Muslimin. Mm. That they are Mu'mineen. And we've all like the magnet of the Kaaba. It's like a magnet. <laughs> Sometimes I just stand there and I watch how this Kaaba, through the grace and mercy of Allah, جَعَلَ اللَّهُ الْكَعْبَةَ بَيْتَ اللَّهِ الْحَرَامِ قِيَامًا لِلنَّاسِ Allah has made the Kaaba, His sacred house, established for mankind, drawing them like a magnet from all over the world as brothers and sisters in Islam, together worshipping the same creator, cherisher, nourisher, sustainer, manager, controller, owner and ruler of everything that is in the heavens and on earth. And it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can do this. And Alhamdulillah, through our love and also our following of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who taught us that Al-Mathal Al-Mu'minin Fi Tawadim Wa Tarahumihim Kamathal Al-Jasad Al-Wahid Ida Ashtaka Minhu Udwan Tada'a Sa'ir Al-Jasad Bil-Alami Al-Humma Wa Fi Riwayat Bil-Sahri That the likeness of the believers in the love that they have for each other and the mercy and compassion that they show towards one another is the likeness of a single body. That if one part of that body feels pain, the whole body feels the pain with that part of the body. Allah. If that one part of the body feels pain, it keeps the entire body up at night mm. because of the pain of that one part of the body. And I think that's what we come to learn in this place. Allah. In Madinat al-Munawwara, in Makkah al-Mukarramah, on the Masha'ir, on the days of Hajj, we come to learn that we are one single unit, one single body. And in order to be a true Muslim, we have to love for each other what we love for ourselves. So inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those that truly bear witness. Mm. When we go to Mina on the day of Tarawiyah, when we go to Arafah on the day of Wukuf, when we journey through to Muzdalifah and back to Mina on the day of Eid, that we truly bear witness that we are so blessed and that we are so favored. Mm. As we say in our Talbiyah, mm. Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Mm. Here I am, O Allah. Here I am. Labbaik la sharika laka Labbaik. Here I am, O Allah, you have no partner. I'm only here for you. For nobody else, for no name, for no fame, for no glory, for no siyaha, for no five-star, four-star hotel, for no buffet. I am here for your service, for your submission, and for your surrender, oh Allah. In alhamda, indeed all praise and all thanks is due solely to you for me being a Muslim. What is the first thing that the people of Jannah will say when they get to Jannah? Allah make us of them. Ameen. Ameen, ya Rabb. Ameen, ya Allah. وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَ لِهَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِيَ لَوْلَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ All praise and thanks is due solely to Allah for guiding us to this and we would not have been guided if Allah didn't guide us. So in alhamda, indeed all praise and thanks is due solely to Allah for the fact that we are Muslimin. وَالنِّعْمَةَ And that this favor and all other favors comes only from Allah and from Him alone. لَكَ وَالْمُلْكَ and everything belongs to you, Allah. We belong to you. Our material possessions belong to you. Our loved ones belong to you. Everything in the heavens and earth belongs to you. We come to witness and testify to that year, O oh Allah. Laka wal mulk. La sharika lak. You have no partner, O oh Allah. We are here for you and only for you. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all the hujjaj and unite our hearts in this 
single journey that we do collectively mm -hmm. for the love and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant and make it a hajj maburur um, for each and every single um, one of us. Shaykh Riyad, I'm, I'm so happy that you have expressed your emotions because this is the place to express your emotions. Alhamdulillah. The Imam, now the other night for Isha Salah, as you know, when, while, when he was reading, um, when Allah explains to Nabi Ibrahim after he built the, 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 the Kaaba, mm. He said, Rabbana taqabbal minna, Allah. innaka anta samin, or tuba alayna, innaka. Ya Allah. And the Imam couldn't, he couldn't, he, could, he, you know, he was expressing his emotion. Mm. And, and wallahi, this is the place. Mm. In Makkah, whether you stand inside the haram or outside the haram, and you, you stand and, and, you, and you lift up your hands and you cry, people are going to think, Alhamdulillah, this, this, is, this is the place to do it. They're not going to look at you with strange eyes and, mm. oh, what, is, what is this man doing? Yes. No, they, they will accept that, no, this, this brother of mine or sister of mine is doing the right thing, speaking he's, to Allah. He's connecting. Connecting to Allah and mm. crying to Allah mm. subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and whilst we were mentioning about Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, I was thinking now, just recently I got this uh, um, guidance. Mm. Uh, because I, I would love to believe that Allah doesn't give you everything at, at one time. No. Yeah, it comes, it comes with time. Mm. And I was thinking, why did Allah choose Nabi Ibrahim salam to be the one that called people for Hajj? Mm -hmm. And the answer is that Allah wants us to be like Nabi Ibrahim. He's the Khalilullah, he's the most intimate friend of Allah. Why? Mm -hmm. Because when Allah, whenever Allah gave him instruction, he didn't ask questions. Allah. He just obeyed. Ya Rab. So that's what Allah wants for the Hujaj. Mm -hmm. This is a lesson that you, manafina, you must witness mm -hmm. all the benefits. Mm. Allah wants, there are so many lessons to learn from Hajj, it's just unbelievable. Madrasa. Uh, Al Hajj Madrasa. Mm. The, uh, hajj is an education, uh, educational institute, in, it's a university. Allah. And it's lifelong lessons. Mm. So Allah wants us to be like Nabi Ibrahim. If Allah gives an instruction, you just carry out the command of Allah and you don't ask questions. Mm. Allah instructed him, leave your wife Hajara and your son Ismail in this valley. There's no plantation, there's nothing here. He didn't ask, he didn't ask, Ya Allah, uh, mm. must, I, must I leave him alone? Mm. Allah, Allah. Allah uh, commanded him to sacrifice his, his son, Ismail. He didn't ask any question. Mm. Allah, Allah. So I, I think these are the lessons that we learn. Mm. And because that is what we want to share with our Hujaj here in Mecca, mm. but we want to share with our viewers also. Mm. And especially, as I've said, uh, said earlier, inshallah, our viewers that have not been for Hajj, they must make a strong intention mm. to come for Hajj. Mm. They, must, they mustn't leave this world un unless they've had the honor to be the honored guest of Allah subhanahu mm. wa ta'ala, to make a firm intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted, inshallah, mm. to, to mm. come to Makkah, mm. uh, to the Baytullah, very, very soon, inshallah. Mm, inshallah ta'ala. You know, Shaykh, subhanallah, I think the one thing that all of the judge, all, all of the hujjaj experience on this journey is that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is humbling us mm. and ridding us of our vanity mm. and of our pride. And by default, mm. if we can rid ourselves of our vanity and our pride, we will be, inshallah, following in the footsteps of Nabi Ibrahim Allah and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because it is pride that blinds a person from the truth. Yeah. Mm. I will turn my signs away from those who walk in this earth Allah of unjustified Allah pride. Allah Allah. So if you know no pride, Allah will... We will uh, say samia'na wa ata'na from the depths of our hearts mm. and we will be the true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believe inshallah ta'ala we'll be crossing back now to, uh, to Mullah Sulaiman Ravat in the studio inshallah ta'ala. Uh, wallah, it's again such an honor to be with you, Shaykh Wa'ini. Ushidullah, amamullah. Yeah. Well, Alam, I take Allah as my witness yeah. and I take the viewers as my witness that I truly love you, Sheikh Ibrahim Jibreel, for the sake of Allah. Ahabakum and I love all the Muslims um, for the sake of Allah. And may Allah SWT make us of those in the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah yeah. that he calls out to and he says, Ayn al bi Jalali, where are those who have loved each other for my sake? Al yawma uvilluhum tahta dhilli, yawma la dhilla illa dhilli. On this day, I will put them in my shade, on the day when there is no shade, it's in my shade. Wa akhir da'wah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to Sheikh Riyad Walls and to Sheikh Ibrahim Jibril. Uh, wonderful there to see the expression of love. And it's another lesson for us here, sitting at home, to, to learn that uh, the hajis and the hujjaj, 
uh, they go there because Allah wants to rekindle that spirit of ukhuwa and brotherhood. Sometimes we become too nationalistic, if I can put it that way. We compartmentalize ourselves too much. So we are Muslims, but we see ourselves as South African Muslims. There might be others who see themselves as uh, British Muslims or American Muslims or Australian Muslims. And by putting you into this melting pot, if I can put it that way, when you're making the tawaf, you're rubbing shoulder with the Aussie, you're rubbing shoulder with the Pomi, if we can put it that way. Next minute, the person in front of you is from Bangladesh. The person behind you is from uh, Venezuela. Uh, you know, you, you're performing salah and the person next to you is from a country that you didn't hear from. And it reminds you of one thing, that the, 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 the ultimate unifier, the ultimate unifier is the kalima, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The ultimate unifier is the kalima, La ilaha illallah. You don't know the person, the cultures are totally alien to each other, the habits are totally you know, different from each other, you've never met before, but what bonds you? What makes you express love to that person? What makes you give preference to that person's comfort over your own comfort? It is the kalima, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Now we ought to have that in our daily lives, uh, with, with Muslims within our borders, within our our space of existence but sometimes we need a reminder we need to be brought into a particular context and Hajj provides that uh, that context and when you come there you are reminded listen I am Muslim first then I'm a South African or whatever else I am a Muslim first then my culture and my habits and and my routine and my cuisine and whatever else so even in a place like uh, Mina for example uh, you may have the South African tent uh, you you may have the different tents for different countries but broadly speaking all muslims have been equated all muslims have been put on equal footing the cosmopolitan nature of islam has been shown it's proven then that islam is not only for the rich or not only for the poor or not only for the white or not only for the black or not only for the the those whose physique is is is, is appealing or attractive islam is for one and all and that ukhuwa and that brotherhood, you know, it, it really comes to the fore in, in a big way. Uh, people who are generally selfish by nature. I mean, imagine somebody comes here and takes your, your, your bottle of water in an ordinary circumstance. Uh, you, you know, but they, the, the, they you, 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 because that, that environment is so conducive. I gave that example the other day. I mentioned it's like, you know, a, a piece of clothing, a garment. Once you throw it into the washing machine and that washing machine is spinning at that speed, and um, it's, it's so full of water and it's so full of, uh, you know, liquid and, and, and cleansing uh, material that even if the, you know, the garment doesn't want to be cleansed, but it's, it's put through this process that the bulk of, of the muck and the grime and, and whatever dirt is there, it's going to be removed. So Hajj is like that, you know, you, you're going round and round in the Tawaf and Mina, Musdalifa, Arafah. It's, uh, you're going through this process and you're going through this cleansing process. Allah Taala calls us to this point because we can be cleansed anyway. Allah can put us through a spiritual cleansing process anyway. And there are methods that we can utilize to spiritually cleanse ourselves anyway. But the, the, the optimal levels of spirituality and the optimal levels of opportunity that you would find for tathir qalb, for the cleansing of your heart and for spiritual uh, uh, cleansing that is found in Makkah al mukarramah in a way that's unparalleled and when you've got so many people all carrying that uh, that flame of la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in their bosoms burning to different extents to different levels but burning nonetheless when they're all carrying that in their hearts then uh, you can only but say that uh, you know throw a person into that uh, into that cycle and that person will come out with some of the benefits. And obviously, if that person has an intention, and that person goes and makes an effort, then the, the benefit will be all, all the greater. So we ought to, be, we ought to understand that the, the, the link of Iman is stronger than any other link. And we saw that in Sahaba. Sahaba were prepared to take the lives of their own kith and kin when they stood in defiance to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the brotherhood of Iman came before the brotherhood of lineage, before the brotherhood of ancestry, before the brother, bl bl uh, brotherhood of, of, of siblings or, you know, uh, ascendants and descendants. It's, it's, that, it's that brotherhood that we need to rediscover that will bring the unity in the ummah, this unity that's sorely lacking and this unity that we're talking about for so long. Sheikh Ibrahim Jibril made one point there that I want to pick up on and he said, 
that uh, everyone out there who has not been for Hajj must make an intention to go for Hajj. And there is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this regard. Man arad al hajj fal yata'ajjal. That if you intend to go for Hajj, hasten, make quick. Um, now, sometimes people become despondent because in South Africa up till recently, uh, you know, there wasn't that much of a quota and an imposing of a quota and, and, and a kind of a tight restriction. And now for the last few years, there have been and people tend to think, but well, when I ever get my chance, you adopt the means and leave the rest to Allah. When Yusuf alayhi salam was trapped by Zulaikha in the room, uh, the door was locked. He didn't say, ah, now the door is locked. How am I ever going to get out? He ran towards the door. He did what was within his control. And when he did what was within his control, Allah took care of the rest. The doors miraculously opened. Similarly, go and register. Then when your chance will come, when you'll get the accreditation, that is in the hands of Allah. But what you can do, do. And make an intention. Start saving towards that hajj. At least if you pass away before you have uh, performed that journey and that, that dream of yours remains unfulfilled, Allah will reward you for your intention. And sometimes, niyatul mu'mini khayrun min amali. Sometimes the intention of a believer can be better than the action itself. When you make an intention, you have an intention of performing a good hajj. And Allah will reward you for that if perchance you don't end up performing it. Whereas if you had to actually go for the hajj, there may have been deficiencies, there may have been weaknesses that would creep in, that would have compromised the rewards uh, somewhat. So all those out there tonight, all those out there tonight who have not performed the hajj, make your intention now even though you may have zero in your bank balance, even though you may consider yourself a pauper, even though you may consider yourself a person who's heavily burdened by debt. Remember, it was discussed yesterday. If you can bring taqwa into your life, Allah creates an exit for you. Uh, and Allah wa will grant you sustenance from where you will never even, uh, even imagine. Now, let's imagine uh, for a moment what's happening in, in, in Makkah, what's happening in Aziziyah. Tomorrow is the last night. Tomorrow is the last night that uh, the Hujjaj will be sleeping uh, before the actual Hajj commences. In this, in this last uh, 24 hours or so, they'll be reading themselves. There's, there's a mixture of anxiety and anticipation and excitement. They're excited, but they're also slightly nervous and scared. We'll talk a little bit more now about that, uh, inshallah, in a short while. We cross back now to our studios in Aziziyah, and we hear about the experience of a first-time Haji. Not too close in here, I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Like Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, honorable viewers of ITV, once again we want to welcome you to the holiest place in the world and the best place in the world, the birthplace of our beloved Nabi Muhammad It's really a great honor to link with you from this place. And uh, it is the desire of each and every Muslim to come to Mecca. And so many people are longing to come to Mecca. And sometimes Allah subhanahu invites them in mysterious and, and great ways. And one of those people are our brother Pervez. Until last Thursday, he only came to knew that he will be part of the honored yes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what Allah has decreed. So I want to introduce to you uh, brother Pervez and to explain to us um, his first, he is a first time to, to this great place, Makkah al Mukarramah. And uh, so, Pervis, welcome to the uh, studios. You are always behind the cameras. Yes. And tonight you are in front of the cameras, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa grant you to be also in front the day of Qiyamah to the Jannah, inshallah. So, uh, uh, I give you over to you to explain to us your feeling about coming to Makkah al Mukarramah. And Allah has honored you to come for Hajj. Yes. Jazakallah for taking me on your program. First, I'll say I'm in a firing line at the moment. Mm. Usually, I shoot people. Yeah. Now, usually, I'm now the camera. Is shooting. shooting at you, yeah. Uh, I'm very grateful that, though in the last moment I was selected, uh, there's a certain individual I need to thank yeah. because I won't take the names, but yeah. many uh, some some of the people have contributed in my uh, being here. Yes. First of all, of course, I'll, I'm grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yeah. That he made everything possible. And there are individuals who, who they, they know who helped me, and I'm very uh, thankful to them as well. 
Um, there were certain things which were unexpectedly happening all this few days. Yes. First, for, uh, the first was uh, when my passport was given in in the morning. Yes. Of course, I was in the hanging of thinking what to do. Am I going to be selected? Not until five o'clock. Yes. Five o'clock, I get a message from uh, Brother Farad Umar. Okay, I'm on. Yes. Now, how do I sort but everything out? Yes, yeah. I mean, I had no preparations, yes. nothing. But Alhamdulillah, everything went well. Mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, my friend Shabir, he helped me in terms of uh, uh, Aram and other stuff which was needed. I literally didn't have nothing yes. on my hand to, to be ready. And uh, we travel along and Alhamdulillah, mashallah, I was here. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, honorable viewers, once again, you hear, heard now for this, this is an amazing story. I mean, just since last week, he didn't think about or even knew that he's going to be one of the guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you. You didn't know, but Allah knew that you are one of the selected ones to be here, alhamdulillah. And uh, I can say to you, Pervis, you know, you will enjoy yourself here. And especially you, uh, you are going to interact with so many people. You are going to act, interact with the millions of people of the world, all over the world. Yeah. So may Allah grant you all the success, inshallah. So how do, you, how do you feel about, you know, the next few days? That's a big days. We're going to Mina, Arafat. How do you feel about it? Okay, I'll talk about my Umrah. Yeah. I mean, of course, oh, first time, yeah, that's yeah, right. first time uh, you know, on the trip yes. and yeah. first time Umrah. Uh, whole night, mm. we couldn't sleep. Yeah. Of course, me and my other colleague, who is yes. also first time here, uh, Raza Ashraf Kenny. Yes. We just couldn't sleep because uh, Farad Umar told me that okay tomorrow morning we're going for Umar. Umar. I mean before Fajr we we went we left. When we went there, of course Fajr time we didn't get chance to get into the Haram Sharif the perimeter, and we had to read our Fajr on the roof. Yeah. So the the patience was or impatient rather was building yeah. up. Yes. When will I yeah. get the, the sighting of the Kaaba itself? When when it took almost one and a half hour. Yeah us to get the access into uh, the uh, perimeter. So, so full then? It was very full, yes. Yeah, we, there, was, there was no access getting through. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah has his way yeah. for all the Hajis to get through. Uh, and when I, of course, the first sighting of Kaaba, time came. It was unbelievable. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Uh, I'm into sports and all that, so adrenaline uh, was kicking in. It, I was shaking. Allah Usually Allah. people don't shake when it's under adrenaline yes. kicking in, but I was shaking. And uh, uh, there was no words express, um, I could express uh, the, the, feeling. uh, the feelings. I mean, I'm talking about duas. Yes. All the preparations were like gone. Uh, I, will, I will do this. I'll, okay, of course, I asked for my family, my parents, Allah. my friends, Allah. whoever asked me to take Allah. mention of the name, and I did that. Yes. But that was it. Uh, what about me? Nothing. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. <laughs> but Alhamdulillah, it was a very good experience. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I learned was sabr, of course. Uh, sabri and besabri. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was at, at Mikat, yes. the taxi driver took a very long turn to mm -hmm. get into Haram Sharif and, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, within the perimeters. Mm -hmm. And the impatience was growing. When, 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 of course, when you come down here, the first thing people say, especially ulemas and friends and families, have patience. Yes. But that trip uh, was the most impatient of all. Love it, bro. When will I reach? In yeah. fact, I, I want my it's colleague. because of the excitement. Yes. Uh, when will we reach? I mean, yeah. I'm talking about just taxi. You still have to walk a long, a long yeah. route to get into perimeter. But just to be in the perimeter, you feel like, when will I reach? Yeah. You can see the tower which we are, I, I mean, right. the clock tower from far. Yeah. But that's it, it's forever far. Yeah. You don't reach close yeah, by. Yeah, yeah. So, Alhamdulillah, we reached and uh, yeah. we performed Umrah. Uh, whether if it's tempered or whatever you can call it, people have patience. I mean, yeah. we have sisters, old ladies, Yes. they all get through. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of chaos there Allah when it comes to circumambulation, yes. Yeah. But everyone makes it. I, I can tell you this. I'm, many times I was wondering there, that 
how will this 90-year-old lady, lady go pass through? Allah no, Allah. she makes it. She makes it. Allah and protects somehow, uh, lucky if, they buy, if they're lucky, they could even have a touching of the Kaaba itself. I mean, to real, this seven, turn, seven, seven rounds I made, at least I made one touch of uh, Kaaba Alhamdulillah. itself. Alhamdulillah. So, mashallah, I was very excited and uh, it came right. I'm, I'm very happy. Mashallah. Uh, viewers, as you've heard now from our brother Purvis, he says the sight of the Kaaba for the first time, it was unbelievable. Exactly what I've said earlier, all the money in the world can't pay for just seeing the Kaaba for the first time. Allahu Akbar. I'm saying once again to you, my honorable viewers, make a strong near, inshallah, intention that Allah must grant you the honor and the privilege to be of the honored guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In conclusive purpose, is there any last comments from your side? Uh, I would say, have belief, have mm. faith. Uh, over the years, of course, uh, coming from underprivileged background, I never thought of making it through. Never, ever. With, okay, I, usually in, in my case, I would always try to get my parents through mm. first, mm. and then if I have some yes. other chance, I'll go through. Mm. But myself, I never, never, ever, never thought of uh, going through. Mm. But in Jiffy, like two days, mm. always you're up, you're going. Mm. So miracles do happen. Uh, viewers, uh, I want you to take note of these words that Parvez said. He says that um, uh, he, well, he considered him of, of the underprivileged. He didn't know that he's ever going to come to Makkah. But he says, have faith and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He reminds me of my dear father. My father was also a very poor man. And he never ever thought he came to, to come to Makkah. But Alhamdulillah, Allah granted him about 15 times he came to Makkah for Hajj and for Umrah. Mm. But he was, as, as I said, very poor. But he always longed and he desired and his wish was so strong mm. that he wants to come for Hajj and he wants to come to the Baytullah. And Allah has granted him so many times, inshallah. So Parvis, uh, we make dua for you that Allah must grant you um, uh, to enjoy the, your stay here in Makkah, yeah, inshallah. Amen, amen. And um, you are playing an important role because you are linking the spirit here from Makkah, from Mina, from Arafah. You, you people are behind the cameras you are very important because you are taking the pictures and you are taking the live actions. Yeah. And it, 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 is, it's got, it has got a great effect on our viewers yeah, at home. Yeah. You understand? So may Allah make it easy for you, inshallah. And may Allah grant you a hajj and baruran. Um, accept all your du'as. Inshallah. And as you've said, your, your, your longing is that your mother and your father, that they come for hajj. Inshallah, when you make that du'a, Allah is going to accept your du'a that your mother and your father soon will be the My father is late. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, he's late. Yeah. Inshallah. May Allah grant him jannah to firdaus. Yeah. Inshallah. May Allah grant him jannah to firdaus. And your mother is still alive. Yes, my mother and my auntie, I would now Mashallah. expect them to come to inshallah. May, may Allah grant him, inshallah, their wishes, inshallah. So, Parvis, uh, once again, Jazakallah khairan. Any yeah, last comments from your side? Uh, I would say that people just have to accept this. If it's written in your fate, it will happen, mm. no matter what. Yeah. Whether so, good or bad, it will, it will happen. So, whatever yeah. is meant to be happening, yes, it will Jazakallah. definitely happen. Shukran, Parvis. Uh, Jazakallah khair, Jazakumullah khairan, honorable viewers. Uh, we, inshallah, hope to meet you soon, inshallah. We will keep you. Uh, uh, in contact and uh, live from Makkah al Mukarramah, from Medina al Munawwara via ITV from Arafah. And uh, stay connected, inshallah, with ITV. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah protect you. We, uh, from our side, all the hujaj, wallahi, I swear by Allah, we're going to make dua for you continuously. And please keep us in your duas. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa rakatu Sheikh Ibrahim Jibril and uh, Parvez Khan, a cameraman here at ITV. What's the lesson behind what you've just heard there? Never give up hope. If you're one of those watching who hasn't been for Hajj or hasn't been to the Holy Lands for a long time, never give up hope. Irrespective of your bank balance, irrespective of your circumstances, irrespective of whatever condition you may be suffering from or whatever obstacle may be between you and getting to Makkah al Mukarramah. Look at Parvez, until Thursday last week, he didn't even know he was going. And now he's there, having performed Umrah, and inshallah, he's going to be performing the Hajj. This is by decree. This is by invitation. This is not upon uh, your status or your wealth or your health. 
That there's no determination. This is whoever said Labbaik in Alam Arwah in the realm of the souls. When, Adam, when Ibrahim alayhi salam made that call, they are the ones. And therefore, we need to turn to Allah wa ta'ala and He can make this journey possible for every one of you out there. We come to the end of uh, tonight's uh, edition of uh, the Hajj broadcast, uh, 1435 2014. A short one this evening uh, due to the Health Matters program. I won't, with, I won't be with you tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow night, Sheikh Sameh Jad will keep you company from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. early evening. And then there's the uh, pledge line from 7.30 p.m. until late in the evening. So we won't uh, be doing uh, this particular segment tomorrow. But I'll be back with you on Thursday night, inshallah, when it will be the first night of Hajj. Uh, the Hujjaj would have been settled in Mina, having uh, completed the first day of the five days of Hajj. And on Friday night as well, when they're moving from Arafah and Muzdalifa, and on Saturday night as well, which is the eve of, of Idia in South Africa. So Thursday, Friday and Saturday, inshallah, from about quarter past seven in the evening till about 10.30, I will be in your company. Until then, fi manillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This live broadcast was brought to you by... This has been an ITV Networks live broadcast. Bake Allahumma la bake. Bake Allahumma la bake. La bake la sharika la kala bake. La sharika la kala bake. In alhamda. In alhamda. Wa ni'amata. Wa ni'amata. La kawa mulk. La kawa mulk. La sharika la. La bayk Allahumma la bayk La bayk Allahumma la bayk La bayk la sharika la ka la bayk La bayk la sharika la ka la bayk Inna alhamda Inna alhamda Wa ni'amata Wa ni'amata Laka wa al-mulk Laka wa al-mulk La sharika la ka La bayk Allahumma la bayk La bayk Allahumma la bayk La bayk la sharika la ka la bayk La bayk la sharika la ka la bayk Inna alhamda Inna alhamda Wa ni'amata Wa ni'amata Laka wa al-mulk Laka wa al-mulk La sharika la ka